What's up, everybody? My name is Nozibele Kamgana Mayaba. Welcome to Don't Hold Back. This is where we say it loud. Now, some of us dream of managing a big company, managing people, and getting a few cents. Okay, a lot of cents on our pockets every month, okay? We have an exciting show for you today. I am so excited to welcome Deidre King. Listen, I don't want to mess up uh, her details on her resume, on her CV, okay? She is the managing director of Jacaranda FM, one of the largest independent radio stations in South Africa. She started her own integrated marketing agency before heading up the Walt Disney Company's marketing and communications for Africa. For a number of years, Deidre also also headed up the uh, brand experience and crisis communications at Nando's for India, Middle East, and Africa. Hey, I am really excited to be talking to this powerhouse. Didre, <laughs> welcome to the show. Thank you so much for making it. Thank you for having me. I'm really excited. I, I can't wait to, to really dig into our topic. Um, where did it all start? Did you did you always manage that you did you always imagine that you're going to be where you are today? But before we get into that, um I see a lot of things uh, on the table. You know, there's a segment where, you know, we ask our guests to bring in, you know, a snack where we can share. Can you just explain what you have for today? So today I brought in green juice okay, um, and milk tart. That's an interesting combination. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't want to hear, um, you know, why the, that combination or why you brought it until much later on okay. in the show. But I just want to get to know you better. Um, you know, that was a, a very you know, deep and, 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 and quite um, big resume in terms of what you, what you did. I just want to also understand, did you always imagine that this will be your path um, when you were growing up? This is the, the industry that you wanted to be in. Where did it all start? So actually, you know, I, I suppose in a way I always wanted to be a leader of some sort. When I was in grade two, you know, you, the teacher goes, what do you want to be when you're big? And I wanted to be the president. Imagine. Okay. So there was always, I suppose, leadership. Mm. Did I think I would be here? Not necessarily. In my 20s, I was actually a film producer okay. um, and did a lot in movies and film was my blood. Um, but I think there you're leading as a producer, you're leading f yeah. film crews and things. So I, I realized I was good at it. Mm. And so, yeah, I've, and I think leadership's really important because everybody's actually a leader. It's how you conduct your life every day. Yeah. Now, I want to go back to when you were young, you said you wanted to be a president. Now, judging from, you know, a lot of kids that we also interact with, it's quite common. I want to be a president. I want to do this. Um, as you were growing up, did anyone kind of doubt just like, oh, no, she'll change her mind? Um, or that leadership, you know, uh, mentality that you had, was there anyone in your part that kind of doubted? that no she doesn't really have the leadership capabilities um, that she thinks she has what has been your experience so no I don't think people doubted it well certainly not my parents because I think I used to also boss people around at home I okay. won't lie <laughs> so I suppose in fact probably I doubted myself at certain times and even still mm -hmm. today we doubt ourselves mm -hmm. so how do you deal with that you know, I think talk, being open about it, I think especially women also suffer from imposter syndrome. Absolutely. So I, I'm very open about the days that I, I suffer from it. I had a recent one a couple of months ago and I went and plonked myself in my boss's office saying I actually feel paralyzed mm -hmm. by imposter syndrome at the moment. And we, we speak it through. And I think when you talk to other people around it, you realize everybody suffers from it. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that's what my, one of my biggest, biggest um, problems at this point in time. Um, I remember you know, uh, I, I do content creation, um, you know, on YouTube, I do a lot of advocacy work. And usually you, you're always in your own, you know, cocoon. And you're like, oh, everything is great. And then you get invited to different events, you get to meet different people. I remember this one event, I literally was in a room with people that I, I used to see on TV. And it was so bad that I could not stay more than 15 minutes in the event. I called my husband, I was like, I'm leaving. And he's like, why? And I'm like, I, I can't because mm -hmm. I feel like I should not be here. Um, so thank you for raising that in terms of being open because I felt I had no room to, to open up mm -hmm. about how I was feeling. Um, mm -hmm. Yes, I should be grateful that I was there, but it, it didn't hide my, my own insecurities Absolutely. and whether or not 
not I was good or, or I was good to be there or not. Yeah. And I think everybody suffers from it. I can tell you those people that you saw on TV and you were kind of going, oh my goodness, I'm in the same room with them. They were feeling exactly the same way. Mm. I want to talk about, I'm so interested to, 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 to know about, you know, your leadership style, um, given your number of years, um, you know, in the industry, in, in different um, positions. Um, what is your leadership style? What has worked for you? Um, what have you experienced personally as well? So I think I think what I've experienced personally, I've, I've experienced various types of leadership styles. And I think that was a blessing because then you learn what you don't mm, want to be. Yeah. Um, I I lead very openly. I don't micromanage. I think everyone's an adult, so yeah. they should conduct themselves as adults. I think I'm a very supportive leader. I want to know about everybody. I don't, you know, I don't want to only know about my senior leadership team. Mm. I want to know about everybody from the security guard um, to to my boss. Mm. And, and I think when you get to connect with people personally, you really understand what makes them tick and how yeah. you can get the best out of them. Can you tell us about any kind of discrimination that you may have faced um, over the years? Um, in particular, I'm also interested as a woman, um, you know, as a woman on um, at the top, um, being a managing director of, you know, uh, the one of the largest independent radio stations in South Africa. Um, any challenges, any discrimination that you may have faced and how you dealt with that? I think it's interesting. I think you definitely um, do experience gender discrimination. Mm -hmm. um, you know, through my career, when I was the managing director of my own agency, I remember going into uh, other big uh, agencies or clients and it would be a, a boardroom of men. Mm -hmm. And when the... Um, the tea gets put down, the tray gets put down in front of you, right? As if like you, the like, who, and, and they also, in mm. those, certainly in those days, they would also expect you to take the minutes in the meeting. And I remember mm. just kind of going, like, I'm very open and blunt. So I would literally push the table to the center of the table and Good. go, not sure who's pouring the tea, but I have mine with milk and one <laughs> sugar. Um, and in fact, I think it's become more subtle as, as people have become mm. more aware uh, in business that discrimination exists. Um, but it is still there subtly. I mean, recently I was in a meeting. Again, I was the only woman in the meeting. I had one of my staff with me mm. and all the questions were directed to my staff member um, because he was a guy. So, so there are these subtle cues that you can pick up that people, yeah, I, th I do. I find it quite discriminatory. Or you're in a meeting and uh, you come up with an idea and um, the next person, in, the, in particular a male colleague, um, kind of supports or, or, or says the very same thing that you said. And you're like, it's, a, it's exactly the same thing I just said, you Absolutely. know, but they get more recognized. Yeah. Um, one of the things that I started uh, adopting um, every time that happens and I say, I'm so happy that you agree with me because brilliant uh, response you know, <laughs> absolutely because then it starts shifting from guys this is exactly what I, I, had, I had proposed but because once again there's that subtle you know discrimination mm. that I'm a woman and then with us with me in particular I'm a black woman in mm. such a setting it I feel like there's also that undertone absolutely. as well yeah absolutely and I witness that often in meetings as well and I think it's about using gentle strength. I think women are good at gentle strength. Uh, and so it's about really pushing the conversation into the right direction. Mm. So, yeah. When you look back, is there any one particular um, decision um, that you had made that you regret? I don't know that I regret decisions. Mm. Uh, I have made some poor decisions, but I think when, it, when you look at that, you go, what did I learn from this and how not to make those mistakes again? I mean, many years ago, I developed a range of pure mineral cosmetics and um, I went into business with um, a boyfriend, mm. a friend, um, and, and that certainly it didn't end well. And then you kind of realize that you, should you go into business with friends or family? My advice would be no. <laughs> um, so, so I think, that, do, do I regret that decision? No, because we, we built a really beautiful business together. Yeah. It just yeah, it didn't end too well. So. It didn't come out the way you had intended Absolutely. it. Absolutely. <laughs> so do I regret decisions? I don't think we should regret. I think we should just learn. Yeah. Um, there's a letter that I wrote uh, to my 20-year-old uh, self, um, turning 32 um, next month. And there's a lot um, that happened in my early 20s, right? Um, and looking back now, 10 years later, I wrote like a, a letter to say, it's about to get rocky. But it'll get better, yeah. okay? Just know that it'll get better. Just hang in there. Um, what would you say to your 20-year-old self when you look back? 
you cannot believe how great you'll be. Oh. Like I, I really do. Like you, you when you're 20, you don't you you oh. can never imagine what you're going to be. I love so, that. Yeah. I really love that because one of the things um, I, I I was so stressed about in my 20s is trying to figure everything out. Um, so do you also relate to that? That you may have been somehow um, hard on yourself. I'm definitely, I'm still today de- hard yeah. on myself. I think that's what we are. Um, are there regrets? I, I had a great, in my 20s, it was, they were crazy years. <laughs> so they were really very cool. But I do believe that we're exactly where we're supposed to be mm-hmm. at all stages of our lives. Mm-hmm. And I think it's about embracing that and just going, what am I learning from this? And not being hard on ourselves. But that's hard because yeah. we are. Yeah, yeah. yeah. One question that I want to um, uh, ask just before we get into our food um, is... How did you, one of the things that I struggle with is the possible change in direction, um, whether it is in jobs, whether it is in something that I want to try out. Um, you tend, one gets to tend to be very comfortable. Mm. Um, when you look at your journey, you were a filmmaker and now you're in the, uh, and, and I heard something about, you know, also beauty industry. Mm. And then from there, you now the managing director of a radio station. It seems like you're not afraid to try new, you know, new things. Um, is that the person that you are? And how do you, yeah, how do you just overcome the fear? I'm like, I just want to be comfortable. I just want to settle. Um, what if this doesn't work? How do you, how do you um, come um, deal with that? So I don't really worry about what if it doesn't work because I think you learn from things that don't work as well. I'm very curious by nature, so um, and I'm and I think you've got to approach things with courage because actually, what is the worst that can happen? Mm. I mean, you're right. I've been fil- a filmmaker, head of marketing for the Walt Disney Company. Uh, I, w- I then worked at Nando's. I mean, this role I literally got in level five lockdown. I'd never been in the radio industry. I got this job, but when I got the job, nobody had even considered a thing called COVID. Um, and I ran this radio station for the first three months from my dining room. Mm. And um, and I think it's about taking a breath and going, all right, how am I going to approach this? I think I think sometimes when people come into new jobs, they want to change everything from the very first moment. Mm. I spent the time listening and asking a lot of questions. Um, and I love it. I mean, it was hard. I mean, I've met my leadership team for the first time in person after three months in the role. I met all my staff nine months later at a Christmas party. But you, you've just got to embrace it and go, mm. okay, I don't know what I'm doing, so I'm going to get people to teach me. And I think there's got to be an element of humbleness as well. Yeah. You can't go in as if you know everything. Yeah. But I am curious. Um, I've learned to have courage. I, I don't like comfortable. Mm. Like my mother always says, you're such a drama queen because <laughs> I'm constantly creating things to give me excitement. I don't know. I love that. Yeah. That gives you the kick, right? Absolutely. Um, that Absolutely. means life will never be boring. No. Yeah. No. Okay, um, Didre, we are now going to be doing um, a, a, just a, a very quick game. It's called mm-hmm. Rapid Fire Questions. I'm going to be asking you questions. Don't think too much about it. Okay. Um, the first thing that comes into your mind. Okay. okay. First question. <laughs> um, work Christmas parties. Are you the last one standing or do you duck out as soon as the uh, speeches are over? It's slightly after the speeches of o- are <laughs> over. I'm good at ninjuring. I won't lie. <laughs> Okay, um, suits or CVs for work, if you had a choice? A combination, as you can see. Yes, I can see. <laughs> <laughs> Choose one, winning the lottery or finding your soulmate? Isn't it the same thing? I was just going, okay. <laughs> I, I have a perfect answer. Can I win the lottery and then I can go and find my soulmate? <laughs> yeah, it kind of feels like the same thing. Although if I had to choose, probably find a soulmate. Yeah. Okay, dogs, cats, um, or are all animals best kept in a zoo? I'm a massive dogs, dog lover. So dogs and cats and animals in the zoo. You know what? I have problems with dog lovers. Why? Especially. Okay. <laughs> For some reason, you're, you, I feel like dog lovers sometimes forget that their dogs can, can bite. And like, no, 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 no. They're so <laughs> sweet. And I'm like, mm. Yeah, can you keep them away? You know? Really? Yes. I'm I'm terrified of dogs. Really? Terrified. No. It didn't help that, you know, my niece um stayed with us for quite some time and she's about four. Mm-hmm. And she started like obviously she went to school and then she came back one day, she's like, I want a dog. I'm like, Lady, you're not gonna <laughs> get a dog. <laughs> 
<laughs> You're not going to get a dog. But maybe it would be a good cure for your phobia. You think so? 100%. I don't think so. I think you must come and visit me. I will, I will not. <laughs> <laughs> How many dogs do you have? So I had two dogs, yeah. yeah. How big are they? They were little, little, little fluffies. Okay. They were very spoiled. Okay. Even even the Sunday Times wrote an article about how spoiled my dogs were. No. I promise you, I'll show you later. So they're not pit bulls or anything? No, like heavens no. Okay, good. No. So we're in agreement that pit bulls are not now? Well, I think it takes a special person to own a pit bull. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Pick one. A cover of Forbes magazine or a weekend with friends and family? A weekend with friends and family. I think so. Yeah. I think so too. Thank you so much for that. Yeah, no, the, the dog issue, I'll think about it. Okay. Um, but yeah, I mean, also with the cat one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's also quite like a a very spiritual thing yeah. in our family where you keep a cat. Um, it's not seen as a very good thing. Really? No. Good. Maybe we should go work in an animal shelter for a day. I don't think so. I think it would be cool. I only <laughs> kept, um, you know, we just quickly we moved into this new house about a, um, a year ago. And the owner was like, listen, we have a surprise for you. I'm like, ooh, okay. And then we got in and it's like, listen, you're getting into this house. We thought, you know, we should leave this three goldfish for you. And I'm like, <laughs> I don't think that's a good idea. My husband's like, no, don't worry. Um, Deirdre, like after a week or so, they got fat <laughs> because apparently we were overfeeding them. And I promise you, we only fed them once. Yeah. So I, I'm not a, um, an animal person. Okay. So you think the zoo, the zoo would have been your answer. Yeah, no, yeah. Every, everything should be kept in the zoo. Really? Yes, I think. Actually, they're natural habitats. Yeah, I do agree with natural habitats. Thank you so very I agree much. With you. <laughs> so, back to our topic, Deirdre. Um, you are currently now breaking the mold in a very um, traditionally male driven industry, yeah. right? Um, but as you said, this career was never, uh, or this change in career was never easy for you for many reasons. Um, so, tell us, how did you, once again, how did you? Just shift your mind, um, one, when it comes to careers, but also the fact that it's a male-dominated industry, um, you are new to it. What has been your approach? So I think certainly my approach has been, one, to listen. Mm. I think we, spend yeah. we should spend more time listening, learning, asking lots of questions. I think sometimes people are afraid to ask questions because perhaps people think they're stupid or not. Mm -hmm. Like I always say, there's no such thing as a stupid question, mm -hmm. uh, just the one you didn't ask. Um, so I asked lots of questions. I remember, so I'd been in the job for a while and then Christmas came yeah. and I thought, well, I can't really take leave, right? Because you're kind of new in the job. So my whole team goes on leave and I then, we've got a radio consultant in um, Australia. So I would spend probably two or three hours a day with him uh, while he taught me lots about radio oh, wow. and in the January everyone came back and I, we had the first meeting I was like okay what about this what about this and suddenly the eyes were all big Love and all it. of that so I think you've got to take time to learn before you start changing things mm -hmm. I think a lot of leaders come in and want to change things immediately I think you've got to listen for a while mm -hmm. get to know your team get to know their strengths get to know their challenges know your strengths and challenges mm -hmm. and then find the best solution and I feel like also, I mean, I wasn't there, but just from the story that you're telling me, I'm sure you you earned the respect, you know, of your team mm. that you took the time to understand what is happening, you know, on the ground, um, what has been there, what has changed, what can be changed, what can be implemented. Mm. I mean, I think I you've certainly earned, you know, my respect as Thank a leader, you. as a woman in, in leadership. Um, now, the last question from my side is, you know, in South Africa, our economic um, landscape changes all the time. Mm. Um, we are always encouraged, you know, we should take up entrepreneurship. Um, but it's quite difficult because I always say, mm. n guys, not everyone is going to be an entrepreneur. Um, not everyone is going to own their own business. Um, how do you, like, what advice can you give um, to people where, I've sometimes felt the pressure of, saying, or of thinking to myself, oh, I need to be a managing director of my own company. But I know that I don't think that is the path for me. Mm. Um, it may be for someone else. Wh what's your view on that? So I think it's okay to recognize that you are an entrepreneur or not an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make it one 
better or worse. Yeah. I think South Africans, by their very nature, are entrepreneur, entrepreneurial. If you compare them to first world countries, mm -hmm. um, things like that. But I think we need to have a combination of both. You need to have entrepreneurs and you ha need to have people that work in organizations. Yeah. And I think it's about recognizing your strengths. I mean, I loved owning my own business. Mm -hmm. I won't lie, I owned three of my own businesses at the same time. Things were wild and crazy. But I, I love working for a corporate as well because there's just different challenges and different things to learn. Um, I think I think being an entrepreneur in South Africa is challenging, mm -hmm. certainly at the moment. I don't think our government gives entrepreneurs um, the support that they need. And then layered on top of that, you have things like load shedding and water mm. shedding and fuel prices and things like that. So I think it's really tough being an entrepreneur in yeah. South Africa at the moment. Cause I think they need a lot of support. And I, I think it's time banks stepped up and started being more innovative in terms of products for entrepreneurs. Um, insurance companies yeah. being more innovative in their products. I think there's there's an opportunity for big corporates to actually assist um, entrepreneurs. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. This has been a wonderful conversation. Um, once again, it's uh, it's so lovely meeting you and hearing your story. It's been wonderful. Um, thank you. Thank you so much. Now I am excited to understand the the link uh, between uh, the green juice and the milk tart let's get into our snack <laughs> portion of the show okay so i'm not sure that there's a hundred percent a link okay but um for me it's certainly for us girls on the go that are living on black coffee um it's very important to get your nutrients so i will often in the mornings grab a green juice so that's why i decided to bring us a green juice because today feels okay. like it's going to be a hectic day yes um and the milk tart is quite significant so i'm not not really a chef or a baker or one of those types of people. I live on green juices. Okay. If the truth be known. Mm. Don't tell my mum. <laughs> but a few years ago when I was working at Nando's, they ran a milk tart competition. And I'm competitive by nature. So I thought, oh, okay, I'll enter this. How difficult can a milk tart be to make? Wait, wait. To, to make a milk you tart? You had to bake it from scratch. You couldn't go to Woolies or whatever and go and cheat it, right? Okay. So I thought, okay, so I, put, I Googled like a hundred different mes, um, recipes and I found one that I thought was quite easy. And I hauled out my wonderful Mexican vanilla and all of that and I started to make this milk tart. It was a disaster. <laughs> I can imagine. Girl. I was waiting like, for that. I promise you this thing would never set. So I had to keep redoing this this milk tart. And eventually it looked quite rustic. Okay. Um, and I thought, well, I'm going to enter it. I didn't win. I was a bit sad. Because um, I'm competitive. I'm sure when you were trying out the recipes, you were quite sure that you are not going no, to No, I thought I would win. Like, you've got to go in with a winning mentality. Okay, it was the best tasting milk tart. It just didn't win because it looked a bit rustic by okay. the end of the remaking it 300 times, right? <laughs> so that's why I decided today we would have to share some milk tarts. I am excited. I love that story. Um, I'm excited to taste both. I love green juices as well, um, especially um, as a first thing in the morning. Um, I'm a big fan also of the milk tart. So Yay. let us taste. You're going to taste with me. Hey. Okay. Yes. Okay, cool. What are we doing first? Let's do the green juice first. Mm. Delicious, that is huh? good. It is good. That is good. And healthy. Mm. And green. Because mm -hmm. mm, we forget our greens often. Yeah. Especially me. Especially me. I'm trying my best. It's much easier to make a piece of toast than a cup of tea, right? You get what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> so this is important for us. <laughs> okay. Now let's do the milk tart. I didn't make this, so you can judge it away. I didn't want to ask, but no, I was I'm, like, I'm, just, uh, I'm very that honest, story, I, I don't think so. <laughs> no, I was hopeless. Mm. That is good. It's very South African. It's beautiful. It is so good. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank you. What a treat. It was wonderful to meet you. Thank you so much, Deidre. Once again, um, it's been so refreshing to, to relate to um, another woman um, in leadership that has you know, such a, a vast experience. You've left me with a lot of things to think about, you know, about my own path, about things that I've actually, you know, started to think about, but... I'm afraid to make change. Am I ready to make change? What if this doesn't work? Um, you know, uh, am I at the right age to think about such things or am I late? Never um, late. So when you started talking about, you know, how you made the change into radio two years ago, I was like, 
that's just recent mm. um, and it's a new industry for you. Um, so thank you for that. Thank I, you for I really me. appreciate it. Thank Absolutely. you. Thank you. So guys, that is where we leave it for today. This is Don't Hold Back, where we say it loud. A proud collaboration um, with Dai Chavela, Jacarande FM and East Coast Radio. Please catch this episode and many other episodes wherever you get your podcasts or on YouTube. I'll see you next time. This is Nozibele Kamganamayab. Don't hold back. Say it loud. loud.